Hello, my name is James Powell and uh, I'm here to talk to you about uh, a package called SQLite Library, uh, which is really a LabVIEW wrapper of the popular SQLite uh, database in a file uh, uh, database system. Uh, so this is a quick start video where I'm starting with basically an empty block diagram uh, to do something very, very simple. So the first thing we want to do is find the palettes. The palettes are under uh, connectivity, SQLite library. Uh, let's start. The first thing we need to do if you want to work with an SQLite database is open it. So let's just open. And now open needs to know what file you want to open. Uh, so, but uh, it actually is fine with an empty file because an empty file actually means a temporary database. So we'll just leave it like that for a moment. Uh, now, once you have a database, you've got to define its structure because we just started a completely clean database. So let's use execute, which executes an SQL statement, make the connection, and then we will write some SQL. Let's see what we do. Uh, we're just going to create a simple table. This is SQL I'm writing. Create uh, my table. Uh, my test, yeah, my test, uh, and these values are going to be uh, x comma y. We'll just start like that. Create my table x y. Uh, and then we have to add some stuff into our table. So now, rather than build it all out, I've added some code templates down here. So if we want to say insert many rows template, quite a bit. Just put it there. Connect our database. Uh, what this is doing here is, uh, if I explain it, we've set up our database with our table. We better call it the same thing. My, my test x y values. So now we want to insert a lot of values into our table. First thing you want to know about SQLite is you want to do things in transactions. So we're going to begin a transaction insert everything and then commit our transaction. That's because SQLite saves to a file and if you insert each say of many many points to a, uh, separately to a disk to a disk file uh, it'll take a long time because SQLite has to verify that it's properly written stuff to disk before it continues. So uh, to make it fast you want to actually bunch things up into as few transactions as possible. So I've started a transaction and commit trans transaction here then I want to prepare the statement I want to use. So here the statement is insert into my test, my test, x, y, values, question mark, question mark. Question mark, question mark means that we're not specifying here. We're going to bind these values uh, at runtime or at, at, at for each value. So let's actually add some data. Fonts first, let's define how much data we want. Create, let's say 10,000. And then what we're going to bind is uh, bind. By the way, this this is the uh, SQLite uh, type system. Uh, SQLite has very few types and is very flexible as far as types. You'll note that when I created my table, I didn't actually define what the types are. Uh, that's because each value can be a different type. Uh, the different types are blob, that's binary data, integers, null, that's nothing, a special nothing value. Uh, some of these things are actually uh, my attempt to convert the more common uh, lab view types into types. So path is really saved as text. Real is a double precision value. Text is a string. Uh, and timestamps and various timestamps. Let's start with just some real values. We'll just have two. And the value would be, I'm going to use on, uh, high resolution relative seconds. So I'm just saving a timestamp, very high precision timestamp. And then I'll say, let's say, uh, let's just save a sine wave. So a sine wave and the sine wave will be some fraction of I don't know what the number to use. Let's say 100. There, so that's generating a sine wave with timestamps and throwing it in as fast as it can. So let's see if it runs without making an error. Hang on. Oh, it did make an error. 
So what have we done? Syntax error. Great table. Oh, of course. <laughs> Uh, I find that SQL is a bit frustrating because it looks like basic English, but it isn't because it's very, very strict. So I understand create my test is create table, but SQL did not, so I had to put in create table. Let's try that. Okay, so that worked. It didn't throw an error. Uh, but unfortunately, we made a temporary table, never looked at it, and then threw it away. So that didn't help very much. So let's, let's, uh, we don't really know if it works. So let's change things. Let's give it an actual uh, file type. So I'm going to, this is polymorphic, you can use a string or a path. I'm going to make a path, create constant, and then browse for path. I'll just put it on the desktop and call it uh, my test uh, .db. Right, now it's running it again, and it worked. But we still don't know if it works, so what we, what we want to do is actually look at what we've written, because we've written to a file. To do that, there are many, many free uh, SQLite uh, administrator viewer programs available on the web. Uh, the one I use is SQLite Expert Personal. It's free. That's an old one, actually. Let's cut that off. Add the database. Find my test. And here we have a database. It has one table, my test. Oh, here's our data in it. You can find our data. Uh, X and Y. Uh, you can look at DDL is actually the definition of a table. So I've gone create table my test X, Y. Uh, first thing we should do actually is take advantage of that and actually put some comments. So I'm going to actually make this a little more commented and call it uh, relative seconds. That's a comment. And then Y will be, what is Y? Sine wave, well, wave. Wave. Now, if I run that again, oops, I'll say a problem. What have I done wrong? Should I, I don't know. Oh, ah, the problem is this exists, so I create a table that already exists. So, what I need to do is drop the table because I'm not interested in keeping data at the moment. Drop table uh, my test. Let's try that one. Yes, okay. So go back to our uh, viewer program. Uh, refresh it. Now you see we recorded the statement, the create table statement, including its comments. So this is, shows how, uh, as a file, we have a, a self-described data file. So if we lost our original program and came back later, uh, we could find this exact structure uh, with comments. So always try and put comments in your uh, data files. Okay, now we've uh, created and thrown some data in our database. Let's actually uh, read something. So let's enter. Oh, so let's look at another template. Let's say uh, select many rows. Oh, what should be before that? Let's do something else with our SQL. So we, we've done that and we want to ask something. So let's say we want to ask. Let's say just a count. Select. And there's a bunch of uh, SQLite aggregate functions, uh, which allows you to do things like uh, count, uh, maximum, average, etc. From my test. So let count from my test. And this is polymorphic, so we can say what we want. Well, we're getting a single value, a single double value, and we can create that. It'll be count. So that works. But what I forgot to do is actually close the connection. That's not good. This is going to fail, isn't it? Close. Always remember to close your connections because it doesn't clean up always properly. Let's see. Let's see if that worked. Yes, count 10,000. 10, actually, it's not that, is it? It's an integer. Count 10,000. So see, that's how we can easily get a little bit of information from our database. But what if we want to get a lot of information from our database? Then we want to use a more, uh, a larger structure. Where is it? Utility, SQLite, go templates, select many rows. Let's put it here. So 
rather than closing right away. So we're going to select X and Y from our table, my test. And then we need some kind of where statement because, I mean, you don't want to just throw data into the database and get it all out. You want to actually filter it and get the information you're really interested in. So let's say where Y is greater than, again, some number. We will bind to that number a real value. Create control. Call it uh, level. So we're going to bind a level, we'll make a level, we'll start with zero or not. And the way this works again, I should actually explain how these uh, statements work. Is uh, you first you prepare a first you prepare a transaction, uh, then you bind parameters if you need to bind parameters. Then you call first step, which actually executes the uh, statement. And if that's okay, then you reset, reset, resets the statement so you can do it again. Uh, so here we've gone through our 10,000 values, bound, bound the information, executed, and reset. And then you finalize the statement when you're finished with it. You free up the resources. Uh, uh, here, where we're selecting, we, again, we prepare and we bind, and we execute. That's the first part of execution. Uh, that gets us the first uh, row of results. So here we get to we get the column data from our results. Our results is actually x and y, which are both doubles. So let's make them doubles. We do get column double, get column uh, double. And then what we're going to do with it, let's see. Uh, uh, then you step, you call step again, which is basically go to next row. So we first step, get the first row. We go to step again, again, and again, get row after row after row. And then when it's no longer returning any more rows, then we stop. And then we finalize our statement because we're finished. Uh, so we need to display this data. So actually, maybe we'll just get, yeah, we better, I know what to do, okay. So we'll just pull our things out. Uh, we'll index to get some uh, arrays. And we'll group them. And we'll make something displayed on the front panel, an XY graph. Uh, this statement, by the way, is just to see if there's no rows returned. But if no rows returned, then you're kind of finished. And you can, if you want, say, if you were expecting rows, you can put an error, uh, error uh, stuff here to say that that's an error. And we should better close our thing. This is a reference, so it's effectively you can close it whenever. But you've got to make sure you close it after you're finished. So let's just do that. That should work. Let's see, does that work? Let's pick a level. Let's pick a level 0.9 and run. Okay, that didn't look very good. Well, let's see. Let's get better. So we better make this pretty big. <laughs> now, this actually is a sine wave. It's slightly uh, messed up because uh, the time was based on uh, when we put the data in, and because of the way the operating system varies, it varies how quickly it can throw in. So uh, let's pick a, a number that's more like zero so you can see. So you can see the sine waves is a bit choppy because we put in the actual uh, time. If we want a more even sine wave, we can actually change what we want. Uh, instead of x, I'm going to ask for something called row ID. Row ID is a mixture that marks the row. So it's like the first row, second row, third row, and it just basically increments up and is automatically put in by SQLite. Uh, so let's change that. Uh, row ID is an integer, but we'll just ignore it. So that's more even sine wave. You can probably get all the sine wave by putting minus one, and that's all the sine wave. So you see, we can easily change. Uh, it's quite easy to change things with SQL, uh, what you want and what the filter conditions are. Uh, this is really, really basic where something is greater than that. You can do pretty advanced filtering uh, with multiple tables joined together and so on. Uh, what else can I show? Uh, so the, if you want to get started with this, a uh, big resource, very important, is sqlite.org. Uh, if you go to sqlite.org, oh, then uh, they've got lots and lots of good documentation. We particularly want to look at uh, SQL syntax. 
which goes through all the syntax if you want to learn things like create table. I mean, it really goes through and shows you all the stuff and really describes well what you want to do. Uh, I didn't actually know that much SQL uh, before I started doing this, and uh, this is a really good learning experience. Uh, SQL is a really good complementary thing to know uh, compared to regular programming because uh, things that are hard to do in regular programming are trivial to do in SQL and vice versa. So some things are actually very hard to do in SQL and are easy to do in regular programming. So they really, really uh, support each other. Uh, another thing to look at is, uh, in addition to this very simple example, is if you go to the find examples, uh, the package does install, I think, four examples, uh, a little more advanced than this that you can look at. So you just search for SQLite. Uh, example one, create table, and example one select is basically a more advanced version of what we just did. So create table will actually create a 100,000 row table with just some data. It shows you how fast it, it puts it in. And, uh, oops. And select will select from the same table. So example one. Uh, and again, it's also a sign away with some noise. This also shows you how fast it works. Uh, this is, can really pull in at about at the ratio of around, uh, at least on my machine, 677,000 uh, points, pairs of values per second. Uh, that's reasonably good performance. I mean, it's not as good as in memory, but it's, it's reasonably good for some things. You can see you can get some pretty fast response times. Uh, like this. Uh, it also shows how you don't have to have the writing and reading in the same program or even in the same executable. Uh, you can have one program that is throwing data into the database as fast as possible. You can have one or more programs that are pulling information to provide views to the user that can be separate. So it's a good way to separate uh, concerns. Uh, what else is there to show? Let's see, stop this. Uh, actually, let's just look at the diagram of some of these things. Uh, it's a, basically what we just did. It's throwing a sine wave, in this case with some noise into a database, but it's doing more. So it's it's got some log files, tables as well, to show you can add, add record additional information. Uh, it's using some triggers, some timestamp triggers, to show you how to do that. And uh, so it's, it's showing you more, as an example. Uh, other examples include, here's example two, uh, this shows how you can use it as sort of a logging program. So uh, how you basically change values and you throw log things into a file. And now you can search. Uh, here I'm searching using a wildcard-like style. So I want to see everything that uh, ends in number two, in which case there's only one slide two. And anything that ends in a two can now show up. But anything that ends in a one doesn't show up. Or I made a mention only in the knob events, or only in the string events, which there aren't any yet. Yeah, there are. All right, it shows up the uh, the searching behavior that you get from that if you type in. Yes, the same one. Uh, slide events and so on. So if you look at the bottom of that, it also shows you again how to do some more SQL statements and so on. So look at those examples. Uh, also have a look at sqlite.com. Uh, for the SQL syntax, and that should really get you started. I uh, hope this was clear. Thank you. Bye.